Hi, I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space on the European Space Agency Web TV. Now, last week we spoke with two scientists about the contribution of Earth observing satellites to our knowledge of climate change. Today, we continue our discussion of satellites and climate with the Director of Global Climate Observing System, Carolyn Richter, and the head of ESA's Earth Observation Program Planning and Coordination, Stephen Briggs. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Caroline, can you begin by telling me a bit about your organization. What is it? What does it do? That's a really good question and it uh, might take a minute or two to explain it actually. It is a, a prime example of an international effort actually. It's uh, more or less United Nations uh, working together as one. It had been established in the wake of the um, Second World Climate Conference in 1990, so it's more than 20 years old and had been established by the World Meteorological Organization, by the Intergovernmental Organization uh, for Oceanography, uh, by the United Nations Environment Program, and by the, uh, it's a non-governmental organization, the International Council for Sciences. So it's a true United Nations effort. But it's not only a program, it's also a system of systems, because it's building on established global observing networks. Okay, and what do you do? Um, I'm coordinating the uh, um, the activities actually, which are supposed to build the foundations for global observations. I'm running a little secretariat, which is hosted at the uh, WMO in Geneva. I am trying to organize expert panels, so I'm uh, harvesting the scientific knowledge and input, uh, and I'm trying actually to, in the end, to implement. Uh, such a system as the Global Climate Observing System, and if I've done that, actually, my job is done. Okay. Now, do you have all the tools you need to monitor and observe climate? Um, yes and no. So, there's an awful lot of things have been established already, in particular, if you're looking to into the space, I mean, there's uh, satellites are the the best tool actually to observe globally uh, on a on a uh, on a, on a big scale, actually, um, climate data. Uh, if you look into the ground, actually, you do have uh, surface-based networks, but you do have uh, regionally uh, deficiencies. Uh, as you can imagine, in desert uh, areas, uh, you might not have the tools you need, so there's uh, definitely some, um, some improvements to make. Okay. Stephen, would you like to add anything about the tools we have? Well, I think you've just asked a very good question, in fact. I think if you were to ask, what is GCOS to the 150 people in the room there, you probably get 150 different answers. But it's, as Carolyn said, it's very important as a suite of observations. It covers the, the whole uh, gamut of observations which are needed from the ocean, from the atmosphere, from the land. All those pieces of information which are needed to be able to understand, predict, and understand the impacts of climate. So it's a very complicated system. Now, what are the challenges when trying to understand climate versus weather? I guess there are probably three different areas where it's more difficult than in, in weather, in a sense. Firstly, uh, one needs to have long-term data sets, very long-term time series. One needs to be able to understand what's happening over the long term to look for changes which take place rather gradually, rather slowly. So observations which need to be consistent over periods of typically 30 years is the sort of number which is used as being a, a long-term climate record, a so 30-year period, which is difficult in satellites. It means having multiple satellites, one after the other, to make the same observation because satellites don't last that long. So that's the first thing is the continuity. The second is the precision. Uh, we're looking for very subtle signals. People talk about the fingerprint of climate change and it's you know, very small fractions of a degree in terms of temperature. So you have to have extremely carefully calibrated instruments intercalibrated with each other. So you're making very difficult measurements. And thirdly, you need to have a very wide range of measurements because climate is a very complex question. It involves processes in the ocean, in the atmosphere, transport processes in the atmosphere, activities in exchanging between the land and the ocean. So you need to measure many different things very precisely for a long time. So apart from that, it's very easy. Okay, and how are space agencies in particular, how is ESA contributing to our understanding of climate? Well, GCOS made it very easy for us in some ways because in, as part of their process of defining requirements, they produced in 2006 a document called a Satellite Supplement, which set out very specifically for space agencies what was needed in terms of observations. 
So that was run relatively easy for us to be able to say, well, you know, here are the parameters, this is what we can do between us. So the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites in particular and the, the coordinating group on meteorological satellites got together. Uh, we have set up a joint working group on climate and we sit together and work out how best we can use the different observations from different agency satellites to work together, to work with each other, to intercalibrate with each other, to provide those sort of long-term observations. Uh, it's a very good cooperation between agencies and a very good cooperation between all the agencies together and GCOS. Okay. Carolyn, would you like to comment on this uh, cooperation? Well, what Stephen just actually mentioned as an example is actually one of uh, the, um, the, the biggest successes actually we can, um, uh, we can show um, in, in, in the past, past years. Um, bringing those different um, space agency groups together is actually quite an achievement. So I really appreciate that space agencies taking the lead, sitting together and trying to coordinate actually what is so complex and so difficult. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. So international coordination seems to be the real yeah. key for understanding. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And Jacob is actually managing to, to make to make a change actually and to even give some impulses actually to the community. So that is uh, for me it's quite satisfying actually to see. Yes, we we look to see the new requirements coming from GCOS and they help us to design systems for the future. So it's not just uh, you know, taking what we've got but also looking at what we should have as well. But we're, in a sense, it's difficult to do that from satellites and from space agencies, but there are relatively few space agencies, I mean, a couple of dozen worldwide who contribute significantly. And it's a much more difficult job for Carolyn to try and coordinate the same observations being made from many countries who are making local observations about hydrology or about local temperatures or whatever it may be. So the measurements which are made on the ground or in ships or buoys or whatever, it's much more difficult for, for Carolyn to coordinate those. Okay. Well, Carolyn and Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Pleasure. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about climate change, about Earth observation activities and space activities, you can visit our website at www.esa.int.